Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Gonna try and keep rolling with the content because I feel like we've been doing quite well this week and uh, there's no reason to not post today, I suppose. And as January goes on, we keep talking about the transfers and, you know, a lot of the transfers that we'd like to talk about that aren't gonna happen. So let's make it go on a little bit further in this video. But the two players we're gonna talk about in this video, hopefully, will be players who could potentially be in a Celtic shirt in the coming future. Um, one more realistic than the other, but we're still going to talk about them. And you've already seen the players' names in the title of the video, but we're going to give a breakdown of the players, uh, my opinions on these transfers, how beneficial they are to Celtic, how much we need these players, and just the general ins and outs of it all. No one in this video I think we'll be talking about, well, I don't think there's any point in the video where we'll be talking about uh, sort of outs, um, play players leaving the club, that's kind of passed in the window. I feel like there should be no one at this point now leaving Celtic, Lewis Morgan, like, to be going, Scott Sinclair's already gone um, there might be a couple of loan situations in there with younger players or maybe maybe even anybody, uh, some other senior players but for the main part of the transfer window I feel like the outs are done uh, I feel like if we want to see anybody else leave the club over here by now, don't know if there's anybody else on the list of players that you feel like should be leaving the club this January window. I know, I know there's a lot of people on social media and such who think there's a, a, a variety of Celtic players who aren't good enough to be in the team, but January is not the time to offload when the depth isn't already there. You know, we need more players as it is to, to, to be there in quality and depth. Uh, and to lose players would probably be a stupid idea. So wait till the summer. Maybe we'll see a, a little bit of a clear out then of players who aren't good enough uh, to play for Celtic. But for now, we'll try and keep things positive and we'll try and talk about the players coming into the club. Um, quickly before we move on as well, as already mentioned yesterday's video, at the top line of the description will be the link to my new website where you can find articles also written by me. I'm not going to go through it all again. If you're wanting to understand what it is, yesterday's video will explain. Basically, it's just a way to keep up with me and my... Uh, Stuff outside of YouTube if the videos aren't enough for you. Because I know some of you just crave seeing me. Anyway, on to the main part of the video. Into the flesh of it all. The first player we're going to be talking about. The first uh, incident we're going to be talking about is, is Malia Soro. Who is looking to be, you know, close to being a Celtic player as well. We're still waiting on the official announcement, of course, of Patrick Kamala. Who has been spotted at Glasgow Airport at Celtic Park, etc. It looks to be a pretty much done deal. Just waiting to find out that he's passed the medical and uh, everything is finalised. And then I can imagine the announcement from Celtic being within the next 24 hours, but a player who looks to be close to joining Celtic as well is uh, the Ivorian, who um, has been pretty much confirmed to be in talks with Celtic and the deal being close to done by his current club manager over in the Israeli top division. Of course, Celtic have been taking on a few players from Israel with uh, the kind of setup under Neil Lennon. We've seen the likes of Miram Kayal come in. Um, uh, we've seen the likes of uh, Abdel Ahmed come in at the start of this season as well. Near Batons came at the club. Oh, under Neil Lennon, uh, and now we're adding another one playing in that top division over there. And to be honest, there, there's not been a lot of disappointments. We, we always sign these unknown players, and a lot of people like to complain that we don't know who they are, and you know, they're not playing in the best division in the world. But there is a couple of good teams over in Israel. We've seen that first hand playing them in the Champions League qualifiers, some decent enough players. And I don't like using the comparisons to world class players. Obviously, yesterday we spoke about how Magic Zerafsky is comparing Kamara to a, 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 a kind of modern day, a new Lewandowski. I say modern day as if Lewandowski retired years ago, but a, a new Lewandowski. A lot of people liking to dub this as, as Mario Soro guy as the new Canty. So there's a kind of idea of what we could potentially be getting there. Um, that, the, the sort of style of player you're expecting. And in the central midfielder position, it is an area I've wanted to see Celtic touch up on now for the the, the last you know couple of months. Despite having some great centre mids at the club, three fantastic centre mids, if you ask me, McGregor, Brown and, and Cham, we've got three kind of totally different players in those three. And you know, and, and now we're looking at another totally different player as well. I feel like we've always just needed that someone who can hold the park there as well, along with Brown. Uh, Brown obviously aging a little bit we will need to start thinking about the future in the terms of how long he's got left uh, as a Celtic starter I mean he is Captain Invincible he's Bruni he's the man we all love but there is going to become a time where his fitness will dwindle a little bit more he'll be ready to step aside from playing as many minutes so defensively in the centre of the park bringing in another player would be very wise and this looks to be the option of what we are kind of tapping into quickly going to get up the quote from the uh, manager of his current side over in Israel once again a team whose name I don't even know if I want to bother pronouncing but hold on a second and we might just give it a go absolutely butchering it here but here we go we're going to give it a go the manager of Benai Yehuda 
I believe it could be over in Israel, has came out and said, as Mario Soros' transfer deal to Celtic has been closed in principle, he's expected to leave in the near future. When I took this job, I knew he was going, so it isn't a surprise to me. It just means we'll have to look for reinforcements in this position. Of course, it'll be difficult because Soros is an excellent player, so very highly rated by his current manager over in Israel now. I think he's played 23 times this season. As I said, a lot of media and such over there comparing him to Akanti and people putting t packages together. Celtic fans have been saying that he kind of looks like a Akanti-esque player. Um, obviously, completely different box of frogs. I think Akanti have been one of the best in the world. There's, there's, there's no way you can compare anybody coming to Celtic with players like Robert Lewandowski and the goal Akanti because they'd be playing for Chelsea or something. But hopefully this is someone who, yes, in the future will be moving up. In the past, obviously, we have signed uh, Ivorian centre mids who were quite highly rated and looked to be promising and it didn't work out for the best in Kurasi Abui but hopefully this one's got a little more positivity to it hopefully not as many injury problems carrying uh, around the player as well and I think it's another one to just be positive about because look we're not in a, a terrible position in the middle of the park it's not like this guy's coming in to be you know a first team starter ready to rev revolutionise the squad right now in the middle of the park we couldn't ask for much better than the options we've got in McGregor and Chapman Brown you're looking at three of the best players in the country never mind in the central mid positions big fan of Cal McGregor as you know Scott Brown Scott Brown the living in Cham is a man who's getting linked with moves to the Premier League for goodness sake and, and look at the stuff he's done for us this season in big big games and Lazio being the one coming to mind we've got three fantastic players so this one I guess there is a little wiggle room a little bit of you know a little bit of calmness around the fact that if it doesn't work out it's not the end of the world it's just the fact you don't want to spend money on someone who's going to be a bust because it's happened plenty of times in the, uh, the, the recent part of the recent history of Celtic you don't want to see it happen again but it looks to be done, uh, according to the media, according to the papers and such. It looks to be close to completion. They have been sp speaking about it in Sky Sports and uh, other outlets, for example. So hopefully we do see that signing coming in. But the signing or the potential signing and the, the rumours that is exciting me right now is the potential loan deal for Tottenham's Jack Clark. Now, you might not know a great deal about, about Jack Clark uh, for being a Spurs player. He's not someone who has been in the, you know, the first team a great amount, but Tottenham did spend big money on him to bring him in from Leeds uh, last season, where he did go back to Leeds and spend the season on loan. Very young man with a, a lot of potential. You know, you don't sign for a team like Spurs if the potential isn't there. And he's someone who Spurs are looking to loan out. Now, look, there'll be a lot of competition teams in the English Championship looking to take him. QPR are apparently very interested there, and a few other teams uh, who will happily take him in. He proved himself in the Championship as a good, good player. That's how he got the move to Tottenham. And even last season, when he was on loan to Leeds, a uh, big part of that Bielsa squad down there making, I think, 25 appearances um, last season in all competitions. Jack Clark is someone who, and I'm trying to put football manager bias aside here, but someone who I've actually looked at as in a, for, a, for a little while as someone quite exciting, one of the young guys down in England who I've kept my eye on and wanted to see do well, it interests me. I liked watching him the, the odd time I got to see a Leeds game in the telly. I thought he was quite an entertaining player, quite, quite a player with, you know what, a little bit of excitement and kind of flair around them, which would be perfect for Celtic. Celtic needs someone in that right-wing position. They can also play on the left, but mostly a right-sided player. James Forrest needs competition on that right-hand side. Neil Lennon has come out today and said he's impressed with the way Marion shred has been training, the way he looks. It looks like he was getting a team ready to get into the team, and Neil Lennon thinks he has got potential there, so maybe they won't bother. Maybe this is just a lot of nonsense, because to me, this is one of those kind of pie-in-the-sky ones. I would love it to happen, but ideally for Jack Clark's career, he's probably gonna want to stay down in England despite you know the success some players have had coming up here I think for his sake he'll look at it as the championship being his better option he's comfortable there he's played there before he knows what it's like in the league he knows how he plays best I don't know if he would vouch for the move for Celtic but he's someone who could come up to this Celtic squad playing that right hand side and cause a lot of fullbacks in this league a lot of problems um and he's not got a great goal scoring record whatever but it's the, the way he kind of you know brings a new dynamic to the game what is what we kind of got with you know Patrick Roberts when Patrick Roberts came off the bench for James Forrest and, and he came on he kind of changed the game it was a lot different there was a new dynamic there as I mentioned and I feel like this is something Jack Clark could also bring up I know loan signings from down south aren't for everyone but this is one certainly that I would if I was at Celtic and I was in the coaching side uh, coaching team or the, the scouting team I'd be pushing to try and get this one over the line especially because we do need someone that right hand side we know we do James Forrest hasn't been at his best the last couple of months despite I, I, I'm not on the side of you know taking him out the team dropping him or whatever I think he's you know he's a Celtic legend he's played terrifically over the last couple of years but he does need that little bit of competition over there. And when Patrick Roberts was in the side with Forrest, it was a great dilemma to have. 
choosing between those two and I like that sort of situation back. Roberts obviously now at Middlesbrough, you know, people were talking about maybe going back for him, but Jack Clark is someone I definitely push for. And if you haven't watched any of them, you haven't seen much of them, I definitely recommend it. Um I would like to see him come to Celtic, not gonna lie. Bit pie in the sky, but a man who has uh, played for a team like Leeds, he gets what it's like to be at a big club. Um, now he's at Tottenham, not getting football. Celtic, I think, would be a fantastic place for him to come. And um, you know what? It's, if he gets a couple of good performances, if he came to Celtic, he could be the starting right mid for the remainder of this season. Um, with the way that Forrest has played over the last couple of months, I know he's frustrated some supporters. Some supporters feel like he's not gave it his best. This could be the perfect answer to get the best out of both players. Um, so I would personally vouch to bring the 19-year-old into the club. I think he could offer a lot. It's mental that he is actually... He's younger than me. That's sad then. He's younger than me. He's He is potentially going to come to my club, play you know, these big, big games. He's already a Premier League player. And I'm this big, fat shite sitting behind a webcam pretending to know what I'm talking about. It's a fantastic world we live in, isn't it? Anyway, that about does it for the two players. That about does it for this video. I hope I've managed to keep you up to date if you don't know the ins and outs of what's happening in the world of transfers for Celtic right now. Hopefully, we do get a couple more signs over the next few days, though, and the finalisation of the Klamala signing two, or the completion, I should say. That's a better word to use. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. I know it's a bit of a late upload. I appreciate it if you have been watching, but do give it a like if you've enjoyed, and hopefully we'll keep this rolling. I'm enjoying making videos at the minute, so aye. Um, let me know your thoughts to my thoughts, and I'll see you all next time.